Nations shall stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have done, by what we have done, we have not loved you with all our heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, we have treated us our own brutal covenant. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and all along in my ways, the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to your Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him in so long. For the Lord is a great God and a great king of all our gods. In his hands we are more than ever to hear. I will go for his also. The sea is his for the angry. His hands have molded the bright fire. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. O the best day, the part of our good voice. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How precious is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Reading is from Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and she, you shall be called by a new name, and that mouth the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and, you, and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land merry. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be merry. For as the young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord.
to John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, he did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ is the Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our lives. Amen. The Lord be with you. And go out with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, that let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only you can live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us as a way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your sin on all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us through your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. One of the many reasons that I love this season after the Epiphany so much is that we get to spend some time in the great signs of Jesus in John's Gospel. All of these signs are miraculous and unique manifestations of who Christ is interspersed throughout this unique gospel that we have in our scriptures. And today we hear the first one, the famed wedding in Cana of Galilee, where Jesus, largely in secret, converts water into wine after the wine at this wedding is given out. Now it might lead us to ask, why, in a world that was plagued even more than our modern one, arguably, with disease and war and all kinds of other issues of the sort, would Jesus perform this, changing water into wine? Certainly a miraculous sign, but hardly a healing miracle, as his first sign. To answer that question, I think we need to look at the bigger picture. I don't think Jesus was trying to perform some party trick, and I doubt he really cared terribly much whether the guests had more wine to drink. I think he was showing something about the character of his grace and of his power. Water, while it is essential for life, precious, is also something that, unless you're in a desert region, is pretty readily available everywhere you go on Earth. In other words, it's ordinary. Wine, on the other hand, is not something that shows up in nature at all without a fair amount of work on the part of human agents. The grapes must be pressed, 
The balance between water and sugar must be gotten just right. Yeast has to be added to the mix. And then the fermentation process has to be allowed to happen. In other words, wine is extraordinary. I believe that the overarching theme of this sign is Jesus showing his disciples and us that his chief power is often in turning the ordinary into the extraordinary. And this is incredibly good news. Last week, as we looked at the themes of the Epiphany and Baptism, I spoke of Baptism being us rising up out of the waters as a new creation. And I suggested that at this pivotal time in the history of the world, the history of the larger church, the history of St. Bartholomew's in particular, that this was an incredibly important image for us. We have to see ourselves rising out of the baptismal waters as a new creation, as something that really doesn't have a past, a new church plant in a new day, given a new mission in our time and place. But this can seem very daunting. The obvious question is, how are we going to do that? That is a huge and demanding task. And we are so small, and in these troubled times, arguably pretty beleaguered to boot. How on earth are we going to accomplish this grand goal of being a new creation? And that's where today's message, where we see Jesus taking the ordinary and by his grace and power, turning it into the extraordinary, is so helpful and encouraging for us. We don't need to start big. We don't need to start extraordinary. It's perfectly okay for us to start small and to start ordinary. Because it is our Lord and not we who will take that small and ordinary gift that we offer up and turn it into something gigantic and something extraordinary. So all we need to ask ourselves is what are those small and ordinary gifts that we have that we can offer up to Jesus and allow him to turn into something huge and something extraordinary that I believe will touch our community of Livermore and the whole world in miraculous ways. And we, St. Bartholomew's, I believe we have some amazing gifts to offer up to Jesus for that purpose. The one that I really want to focus on is this. In troubled times like these, the temptation that is always there in human communities to circle the wagons and to become tribal gets amplified. It's all too easy when we're feeling fear and anxiety and uncertainty to want to comfort ourselves by surrounding ourselves with what seems like a shield of protection. A shield of protection that is people who think the same way, act the same way, affirm us in who we are, and don't really challenge us to stretch out beyond our comfort zone. But I see in St. Bartholomew's an incredible amount of courage, an incredible amount of forgiveness, an incredible amount of grace that has allowed us, even in these troubled times, perhaps especially in these troubled times, to hold within the grasp of God's love and our love a community that is diverse, in which there are some disagreements and tensions, to not become tribal, to not become cliquish, and somehow maintain the bonds of love within our community. That might seem ordinary, 
It might not seem like a flashy spiritual gift, but my friends, this is precisely the sort of thing that Jesus can touch, take in the palm of his hand, and multiply to something that is huge and is extraordinary. This is the water that he can turn into wine. The only thing we need to do with it is as we hear in another gospel, take that light and don't put it under a bushel basket, but put it on the lampstand for everyone to see. Shout it from the housetops, not boastfully, not arrogantly, but just make this ordinary and yet extraordinary gift of ours visible to the community around us and to the world. When we do that, we will be the ones who filled up those stone jars full of water. All we have to do is stand back and watch as our Lord touches that water with his power and turns it into the finest wine.
with boundless joy in Christ's epiphany to all peoples. Let us pray, saying, O Christ of all nations, hear our prayer. O God, who made your blessed Son manifest to all the peoples of the world, and bid him to preach peace to those far off and those near. You call your people to unite in worship, that we might receive power to become your children, divine beings in whom your word has hands and feet. Pour out your blessing upon the church throughout the world that gathers for this purpose. Send this blessing, especially today, upon the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Church of England. Pour out your spirit also upon the Episcopal Church and our diocese, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, St. Peter's Church in Redwood City, and Trinity St. Peter's Church in San Francisco. Let your blessing also come to our fellow faith assemblies, especially Congregation Beth Emmett in Pleasant. O Christ of all nations, hear our prayer. prayer. O God, in whom mercy and justice embrace, we ask for your love to take wings in all the nations and peoples of the world. Bend the hearts of all nations and peoples toward peace and righteousness. Send your spirit especially upon Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles throughout this land, this and every land. O Christ of all nations, hear our prayer. O God of perfect health and wholeness, in this time of pandemic, social unrest, and environmental crisis, along with the fear and uncertainty around us and in us, we lift up to you all those who care for sick and suffering. For our special blessing upon all who follow your call to care for others in body, mind, and spirit. Give them the gifts of courage and joy in their work and protect them from all adversity and harm. O God of all nations, hear our prayer. Lord Christ, this congregation gathers together as a people inspired by your first coming and looking for your coming again. Bless all its members with the gifts of hope, wisdom, and compassion. We lift up to you especially these members in our weekly cycle of prayer. We pray for Mary and Dave, for Jennifer, and for Jerry. And we also commend to your grace and protection these in military service. Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, Taylor, and Drake. O Christ of all nations, hear our prayer. We pray also for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who have requested our prayers for healing and wholeness. We pray for Angela, Olivia, Becky, Brett M, Kathy, Dave, David, Doris, Erin, Esteban, Helga, James, Janice Bravo, Caitlin C, Julia, Ben and Catherine, Kip, Linda, Marion, Marge, Marsha, Mary, Nina, Michael, Michael M, Phil, Robert, Sally, Richard, Yvonne, Father Vaughn and family, Ken McKenzie and the McKenzie family, Deacon Jennifer Nelson and family, 
the Payne family, the Thayer Moore families, and the Diocese of California. And I'd like to wish a very happy birthday, 80th birthday, to Mary and Martha, twin sisters to Dave R., whose 81st birthday follows. Give to your people the gifts of comfort and healing, as well as a lively and abiding faith in your goodness throughout all circumstances. O Christ of all nations, hear our prayer. Lord Christ, in your passion and resurrection, you made death the gateway to new and eternal life. For that life on all your sins departed this life, especially Uncle Bob, Constance, Melissa R., Rosalie, Glennis, Alex and Mark, and raise them to everlasting glory in your kingdom. O Christ of all nations, hear our prayer. And now, O Christ, in eager anticipation of your coming kingdom, we pray to you with hearts and voices for our own needs, other needs, and concerns. And we offer you thanks for all the blessings this life. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your all of us, Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as they be best for us. Give our sons and his more love and knowledge of your truth, and may it be a child by the life of us. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thank you to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore.